A gracious good day to one and all once again. Tis I, Norton the First, by grace of God, Emperor of the United States and Protector of Mexico. Back with you all once again for episode number 98 of Emperor Norton's fantastic history vlog. Today is July 17, 2020. It is our 122nd day under COVID-19 restrictions here in San Francisco. Well, let's begin with our national days. Today is World Emoji Day. We can't get that right. I'll put some emojis over there. Yellow Pig Day. National Tattoo Day. We don't have any. Wrong Way Corrigan Day, which we'll get to a little later on. Fun story. And Peach Ice Cream Day. Mmm. Oh, that's one of my favorites. Is it yours? Let me know. Leave your comments below. People so rarely comment on this vlog. Are you out there? Are you watching? Can you comment, please? Good, bad, advice, trivia, whatever. Leave your comments down below. One of our newest segments, Florida Man. This day in Florida Man, Florida Man's murder was really an elaborate suicide by balloon. Okay. Our San Francisco story today is, as it is so often taken from John Walston's wonderful book, This Date in San Francisco. Thank you, John. Because on this date in 1934, the police and vigilantes attack alleged communists. After San Francisco's labor unions declared a general strike in response to the fatal shootings of two labor men, rightists responded with another kind of strike. On the morning of July 17, 1934, 35 squads of what were variously described as conservatives, vigilantes, and infuriated men who may have been labor men themselves or may have been paid goons, attacked what the Examiner and Chronicle called Communist Headquarters. Well, that Communist Headquarters was the Union Headquarters. And if you've been following the news the last couple of days, what's going on in Portland, Oregon, uh, this is somewhat prophetic. Terrible. But there, check it out. It's not good news, people. Not good news at all. Well, let's move on to our other history for today. It was on this date in 1841 that the British humorous and satirical magazine Punch first published. It finally closed in 2002. In 1861, on this date, U.S. Congress authorizes paper money. Hmm, well, we have our own. 1917, Royal Proclamation by George V changes the British royal family's name from the German saxe coburg Gotha to Windsor. We never had to change our name. 1918, the Romanov royal family and several of their retainers are executed by a Bolshevik firing squad. 1936, Spanish generals Francisco Franco, who is still dead, and Emilia Mola lead a right-wing uprising starting the Spanish Civil War. 1938, I don't know if I said earlier that it was Wrong Way Corrigan Day, I think I left that out, and that is because on this date, uh, Douglas Wrongway Corrigan leaves New York flying for Los Angeles, actually Long Beach, and winds up in Ireland, supposedly by mistake. That's where that comes from. Wrongway, yes. 1944, the Potsdam Conference, where President Harry Truman, uh, Soviet leader Joseph Stalin, and uh, British Prime Minister Winston Churchill, pardon me, hold the first post-World War II meeting. 1955, Disneyland opens in Anaheim, California, and the opening is televised. In fact, it was hosted by somebody we're going to talk about in a little while. 1967, the Prefab Four, the Monkees, perform at Forest Hills, New York, 
Jimi Hendrix is their opening act. <laughs> oh, that's a good one. 1968, the Beatles animated film Yellow Submarine premieres in London. And 1974, John Lennon is ordered to leave the U.S. in 60 days now. That was later rescinded. Uh, 1975, Apollo 18 and Soyuz 19 make the first U.S. USSR link up in space. In 1998, Russia buries Tsar Nicholas II and family 80 years after they were executed. They were given a state funeral. Births today. 1889, Earl Stanley Gardner, American detective writer. Perry Mason. Oh, terrible version. I'm sorry. I'm sorry. 1899, great actor, Jimmy Cagney. You know, I never knew he could sing and dance until I saw Yankee Doodle Dandy. Or was it for the, no, Yankee Doodle Dandy, yes. 1917, Phyllis Diller, well, a great comedian. Uh, she was actually a housewife in Alameda, California, in the East Bay. When she first got started in the 19, late 1940s, she was living there with five kids and an unemployed husband and launched her career later and, well, the rest is history. 1920, Gordon Gould, American physicist, inventor of the laser, which is everywhere now. 1935, one of my favorite actors, Donald Sutherland. 1935 as well, well this gets complicated. It's actually the birth date of Peter Shickley, whose alter ego is PDQ Box, so it was listed online as being PDQ Box birthday, but that's impossible because, well, as it says from, um, let's see, from Peter Shickley's own biography, PDQ Bach was born in Leipzig on April 1st, 1742, the son of Johann Sebastian Bach and Anna Magdalena Bach, the 21st of Johann's 20 children. He is also referred to as the youngest and oddest of Bach's 20 odd children. He died May 5th, 1807, though his birth and death years are often listed on album literature in reverse as 1807 to 1742. If you've never heard PDQ Bach, if you're a fan of classical music, it's wonderful satire. Check it out. 1937, the birth date of Elmer Fudd. West and we waxation at West. <laughs> One of my better ones, I think. 1951, Lucy Arnaz, the daughter of Desi Arnaz and Lucille Ball, uh, did a lot of acting on her own as well. 1950, singer Phoebe Snow. 1952. Uh, David Hasselhoff and another great German, 1954, the Chancellor of Germany, Angela Merkel. Deaths today. 1959, the great blues singer, Billie Holiday. Did you know that she is the godmother of BART director Bevan Dufty? Who knew? 1961, baseball player, pitcher Ty Cobb. 1967, John Coltrane, the great saxophonist. 1971, Cliff Edwards, ukulele Ike. 2001, Washington Post publisher, Catherine Graham. Uh, look her up. There's a quote from, I believe it was Nixon, I'm pretty sure, on the Watergate tapes that she was going to get something caught in a ringer if she pursued the Watergate story. That might have been John Mitchell. Not sure, look it up. 2005, actor Geraldine Fitzgerald. 2006, Mickey Spillane, uh, the great mystery writer. 2009, Uncle Walter, Walter Cronkite. They're one of the greatest newscasters ever. In fact, we're gonna pay him a little tribute in just a moment. And 2014, uh, the great Broadway actor, singer, Elaine Stritch. And that's the way it is. Friday, July 17, 2020. Is that the right date? Yes, I got it right. That was my little tribute to Walter Cronkite. But now back to the regular one. That wraps it up for today's edition. Until we see you again, stay safe, stay inside, stay healthy. 
If you go outside, wear a mask. It's the simplest thing you can do to prevent more infections. It doesn't just uh, protect yourself, it protects others. Care about others. Don't take unproven cures and be kind to one another. Until we see you again, a gracious good day.